Greetings to the Christian News and Views. This is episode two. And uh, this is your host, R. Frederick Riddle. The news I'm going to be talking about today is actually took place last week, as uh, I believe it was actually last Friday. Um, Elon Musk, SpaceX, he br uh, brings the ISS astronauts back to Earth after Boeing Starliner problems delayed their return. That was the headlines. And I, I took some of the uh, excerpts from the article and I'm going to read them to you and then I'm going to comment about uh, different aspects of, of this. Uh, NASA astronauts Matthew Dominic, Michael Barrett, Jeanette Epps, as well as Alexander Rubenkin from Russia's Roscommon uh, Cosmos Space Agency uh, spent almost eight months on the International Space Station. They took off on uh, March 4th aboard SpaceX reusable spacecraft Crew Dragon Endeavor, to which was launched by a Falcon 9 rocket. Routine space missions usually last about six months, and Crew 8 was initially scheduled to return home in August. However, Crew 8's time in space was extended as NASA investigated uh, helium leaks on the Boeing Starliner mission that launched in June. So, uh, the Starliner astronauts Barry E. Wilmore and Sunida Williams were opposed, supposed to be in space for only eight days. <laughs> but uh, now that, then they became uh, set to return after eight months. And then this last Friday, four astronauts splashed down after eight months on board the ISS. So this brings me to my opinion. First of all, I find space exploration extremely interesting, perhaps because I am an author. In fact, I've written uh, one novel called Spectre that involves space. And I am currently writing another novel about space. So both take place in the future. Uh, the first one is actually available at the bookstore. Uh, you, you can get it at Amazon or you can get it at the uh, bookstore, trbookservices.com. It's always on sale there, so you can get it for a little bit cheaper price. And uh, so that's that. But the thing I want you to catch here is that uh, I am, first of all, a fan of space exploration. I love it. Some people, I believe, are opposed to space exploration, but I favor it. Our society already benefits from numerous products that were developed as part of the research necessary uh, to explore space. You can, your kitchen, your living room, your bedroom, every place in your house has somehow been in, impacted by space. You have products that you use perhaps daily. I am particularly interested in SpaceX and Virgin Galactic because although SpaceX works with the government, I believe that private business can do so much more than the government. And I think we are on the front lines watching this. Do I expect science to discover human life or anything like it with the ability to think, reason, and know God? No, I do not. The Bible t treats Earth and the people on it as special. He created us and loves us, and we see that truth throughout the Bible. Speaking about the Bible, that brings us to another segment, which is related to this news. And that, that uh, takes us to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. And you're welcome to follow this with me. In Genesis chapter 1, 1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, a casual reading of this would mean that, uh, to you maybe that the heaven is the heaven around us, the atmosphere. And that would be correct to that extent. But it also could be more than that. So we're going to look at the first chapter of the book here. 
and we find out that the first chapter of the book seems to have been written by God himself. And before you get all excited about that, let me prove my point. Because this that's a very reasonable assumption based on what's called a Taladoth that appears in Genesis 2.4, which I will turn to here. In Genesis 2.4, it says this, and we're going to only look at... Um, we're only going to look at the first half of that verse. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. So, that's a, uh, that is a signature. In this case, there is no name associated with it. It's called the generations of the heavens. That is a reference to God. And so, Based on that, many people, including myself, believe that everything before that was written by God himself. He could have done it on a tablet. We know, know he, he did that later on with Moses. He could do it different ways. But we believe that he wrote the first chapter. Then we get to the second chapter, which is also about creation. And this is where some people get confused. They think that they're opposed. They are not opposed to one another. Actually, Adam's account adds additional information to the original account. And so we are now we're seeing God's account, then Adam's account, which represents man's view. A lot of the Bible is based on man's view. Every once in a while, God has to intervene and say, uh-uh, you're wrong. This is the correct view. <clears throat> Therefore, God has shined a light a spotlight, if you will, on the fact that he created the earth, the vegetation on it, the oceans on it, the animals, and mankind itself. But there's more. In Genesis 1-1 again, it says, God created, we know that part, the heaven and the earth. Well, heaven might be, as uh, we pointed out earlier, the atmosphere, but it can also mean the heaven, the, uh, the second heaven could be space. The third heaven is where God himself lives. And so he created all of what we have. Earth, the universe, and then the third heaven itself. Nowhere do I find God saying not to expl uh, explore heaven. And since he gave man an inquisitive mind, I think it is a legitimate uh, exploration. Now, what does that mean for you and me? Well, for one thing, we have the complete Word of God. And it means to me, in reading it, that God says nothing against it. And the implication is that it's all there for us. Not just merely to look at, maybe it's there for us to explore, to learn, to gather more information. First of all, about Him. The more we know about the universe, the more we know about Him. The more we know about our own planet, the more we know about Him. And so the Bible wants us to um, under, to take the, well, for instance, in, in uh, Genesis chapter 1, uh, when He creates man, um, God created man and then he gave him the stewardship of the earth to take care of it. That can be extended out to taking care of our space. Uh, we find we're putting junk out there now and so they're already trying to make sure that that junk doesn't grow and in fact that they eventually get rid of it. And so there are thoughts and plans on that. That's called stewardship. And so as we expand our discoveries and everything, it's going to impact not only our lives, but the universe itself. It's kind of exciting, I think. Uh, I see Galactic, uh, Virgin Galactic and SpaceX possibly merging sometime in the future. Whatever it is, I see God not in opposing, but perhaps encouraging us to explore our universe that we live in. I see nothing wrong with it at all. And so that is my opinion about what has been taking place just this past week. 
And as we go forward, we're going to see more of this science. You're going to see uh, more space stations. You're going to see uh, our ships getting better and stronger. I've been reading up on warp drives. Why? Because I'm an author and I want to include that in my science, my, my books. Well, warp drive right now is a thing of fiction. But I'd like to point out to you that when Jules Verne wrote about his uh, submarine called the Enter I believe it's called the Enter uh, Enterprise, I think it was, uh, that was basically I described a nuclear-powered ship. Total fiction. No, not really. There were some theories out there at that time that I damn we might might be this or might be that, and and they there wasn't anything that they had really a firm grip on, but it was already starting to form in man's mind. And then later on, years, decades later, we got the nuclear submarine. We got nuclear power. We got all sorts of... Now we're reaching out into space. So what we think is impossible today, tomorrow is a different thing. They say, oh, it's going to take hundreds of years to get there. Well, they said that about submarines and other things as well. When man starts doing it, and if God's involved in it, I can see it really progressing fast. Unfortunately, the science, most of our scientists don't believe in God, and so they try to do it on their own. As a result, they make a lot of mistakes. They mess around with the, uh, evolution, which is a waste of time, but they are, because they have God gave them a brain, they are using it, and they are discovering things slowly and it, eventually it starts picking up speed and then we get these great inventions that impact us in a very positive way. So I know this is a very short um, podcast today. I, like I said, I'm just getting new at this, so this may, these might be short in the future as well. But I want you to have a great day, great uh, rest of this week, and uh, I got some more podcasts coming your way. Just remember this. We're not a, we, ha, we're, we may be alone in the universe as far as being humans are concerned, but we have a whole universe of planets and stars and other things just waiting for us to explore. I'm excited about what they're doing. You have a great day.